In this week's episode of Inside Iowa, we'll meet a University of Iowa researcher who has a special skill that helps him in the lab, visit a coffee shop on campus run by the School of Social Work, and see how the University of Iowa Children's Hospital helped a little girl with club feet. Hi, I'm Haley McMiniman. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Inside Iowa, your stop to find out the latest information about the university, faculty, alumni, and research happening on campus. Up first, meet Jason Clark, who is a researcher at the University of Iowa. He conducts cutting-edge research in the Department of Pediatrics involving molecular biology. He also has a unique talent that helps him in the lab and in life. Jason Clark is a researcher for the University of Iowa. He worked his way up from a dishwasher at a lab at the University of Michigan to become a full-time researcher and scientist and join the University of Iowa staff in 2007. I do kidney research, molecular biology, in the Department of Pediatrics. So I study normal and abnormal kidney development at the molecular and genetic level. One of the research projects that I work on is a very rare birth defect that I stumbled upon years ago in the mice that I was working with. We were crossing mice together for a certain reason, but we, we wound up recreating a birth defect that's, that's rare in humans. And when I researched it, nobody was doing research on it. And so here it was, I had the mice that could duplicate it. So we were gonna try to find the genetic causes of that birth defect in humans. It's called the bilateral renal agenesis. The human fetuses and babies, they're being born without either kidney. That's a lethal birth defect. And we're really the only research lab in the world. I'm one of the only people in the world that's doing that research right now. Jason loves his job. He's able to conduct cutting edge research for the University of Iowa and works in a field he enjoys. But Jason has another passion, one that not many of his coworkers know about. Pick his knee up, turn his head down, okay, like a seesaw. He's the owner and head instructor at Iowa City Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which is a form of martial arts. While he spends his days in a lab examining microscopic proteins and DNA, he spends his nights at the gym, on a mat, teaching others about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which he's been involved in since he was a kid. I've been in martial arts since I was seven. I don't remember life without some sort of martial art in my life, all because of Bruce Lee, probably. I didn't grow up in the best neighborhoods. So there was a necessity for it at the time. And I moved around a lot, so I got beat up a lot. So there was a necessity for martial arts in my life. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is a grappling martial art developed in Brazil in the early 1900s. Using various holds, throws, takedowns, chokes, and strikes, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is a method of self-defense that doesn't rely on strength or power, but knowledge of leverage and anatomy to subdue an attacker. You'll find that most guys that do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu tend to be a little bit more cerebral. They need a bit more of a mental challenge as well as a physical challenge. You really get that in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu versus any other martial art. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu provides a mental and physical workout. That's why Iowa senior Shane Bertsloff got involved in the sport. He was looking for something to keep him in shape after learning in high school that he couldn't play football anymore. At the beginning of my senior year of high school, they found a, uh, a cyst in my jaw that had eaten away all the bone, basically on, on, on this side of my jaw. And so they told me I couldn't play football, I couldn't wrestle. Um, and that's when I started uh, doing jujitsu and Muay Thai, which you would think that's like, you know, that sounds pretty stupid to start that after being told no contact. But um, I could practice and, you know, not compete or not spar. Um, and still learn technique. Shane trained and trained and was eventually cleared to start competing in mixed martial arts bouts. His overall record is nine and four, and he notices a benefit in the classroom after a workout. When I leave this gym, I feel great. Physically, mentally, you know, there'll be days that I don't want to come and I'm tired and I, and I come and I leave and I feel great. I'm able to go and do homework, I'm a little bit more focused. So I'm gonna work on my grip break real quick. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu has also helped Jason outside of the gym. Part of Jiu Jitsu is the ability to escape a stressful situation, which can help in the lab, and in life as well. And it carries over off the mat too because you, you get to handle a stressful situation for somebody who's not used to it. But over time they get used to being in that environment and they, they keep a very cool head. And that will carry over off the mat 
when you're negotiating for a salary or you're giving a presentation. I have to give PowerPoint presentations in my day job and uh, it's nervous to get up there and talk in front of people. But when I remember, you know, I can do things that make me nervous and keep a cool head, you know, I do it all the time here. Wild Bills is a coffee shop run by the School of Social Work. It's been in existence since 1965 and has made its mission to employ people with handicaps and disabilities of all kinds. Over the years, Wild Bills has developed into a volunteer center where students are able to develop relationships with the employees. Wild Bills is a coffee shop run by the University of Iowa Social Work Department. It brews a great cup of coffee, but that's not all it serves. This coffee shop eliminates the boundaries for people with disabilities and gives University of Iowa volunteers the ability to learn a little more about what it means to be differently able. University of Iowa sophomore Sarah Kress is a volunteer at Wild Bills. I honestly had no idea what I wanted to do and then I took intro to social work and fell in love with the class and the stories and now working here I'm honestly really interested in working with people with handicaps and disabilities so it inspired me. As a pre-social work major, Sarah needed to find a way to fulfill her 45-hour volunteer requirement. Wild Bills was her answer. It's just such a laid-back place for everyone and I come here and kind of just get to take a break from everything and play games and just have fun with everyone. And it's awesome. I come in, just catch up, I guess, on the weekend and how everyone's doing and help out making coffee, doing some light cleaning things and pretty much just play games and get to know each other. Bart and Sarah have formed a bond that not many University of Iowa students get to do. This relationship was made possible through the volunteer program at Wild Bills, run by Jeffrey Palermo. The coffee shop is a nonprofit, so we really operate to give students an opportunity to have a coffee shop, but also to relate to and, and build relationships with the employees who work here. So we include, consider our employees to be educators. So we want them to talk to our students and to interact and there to be less isolation, which is what usually happens with adults with disabilities, is that we don't get to interact and learn from each other. So it's a learning lab, literally. And uh, we keep it going because it's the only student space in the building where people can relax and study and uh, have something to eat. And historically, Wild Bills has contributed to this community for more than 37 years. Wild Bills is a coffee shop that has been in existence since 1975 when a man named Bill Sachter came to Iowa City. And Bill Sachter had been institutionalized since the age of seven. So for a total of 44 years, he was in Faribault, Minnesota institution for the so-called feeble-minded. And during the deinstitutionalization period, um, everyone was let out of those institutions and placed in the community. Bill needed something to do, and so they offered him a job making coffee for students and faculty and staff, charged 25 cents. He didn't know how to make change or really run the cash register. He would just hit any key and people would pay him a quarter and he loved doing that. And now, years later, Wild Bill still serves coffee, smiles, and friendship. It's a very beloved place by the students who've graduated here. We have over 6,000 alums. And the first thing that they want to do when they come back is come to Wild Bills. It's a, a central location that people have a lot of fond memories about because of Bill Sachter and who he was and how he influenced their lives as social workers. Wild Bills creates this community. And for people like Bart Smothers, a current employee at Wild Bills, it allows everyone to feel accepted at the University of Iowa. I make coffee, clean off tables and clean, clean counters. Bart has worked at Wild Bills for the last six years and has loved every minute of working with volunteers like Sarah. Like I say, I, I, I don't have any dreads coming. I, I, I always have fun when I come here. So, you know, it's like I say, it's a fun place to work. It's something I've never done before, so it's kind of out of my comfort zone. So just like that aspect of it, getting to know people with disabilities and 
They're just like everyone else, and that was really rewarding for me, just stepping out of my comfort zone. Uh, for sure, finish out the semester here, probably end up getting more hours next, next semester, next year as well. Wild Bills has influenced many, and if you're looking for a great place to have a cup of coffee, come check out Wild Bills at the North Hall location on the University of Iowa campus. At the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Dr. Ponsetti developed a non-surgical method to correct club feet, which helped a family's little girl live a full and active life. We brought our daughter, Allie, home from China at 34 months. She had bilateral club feet and she had not been treated. So that was our task was to try and find a doctor who could treat her appropriately. So we went further to Utah, had a treatment plan set up and it would be the surgical method. And then something in my gut told me as a mom that something wasn't right. So then went back to the drawing board again. and. Um, I found Dr. Ponsetti. At that point, I thought, you know, I really want to talk to the person himself who has developed this method. So called Dr. Ponsetti and got to talk to him, and it was amazing. And um, I was, I just thought, this is our miracle. This is what we have been hoping and praying for all along. We got on an airplane and came out here, and he said that he would treat Allison. The minute we got into the clinic, I knew we were in the right place. It was the most amazing experience to watch um, how, how they transformed her feet and really transformed her life and um, with the casting method that, that he came up with and um, we're so grateful. She was actually older and so it required more casting than an infant that has not been walking and you know usually five, six, seven casts you know, it's able to correct the deformity, but in her case it required 15, 16 casts in order to get the feet corrected. She's doing ballet and she's also biking and running and participating in all activities at home and at school. So she's been doing well. He was just amazing with her. You could just see the gift he has with children and he really worked to help make her at ease and everything. Nurse Maria is She's really important to us. She's one of the key people there with Dr. Marquende and Dr. Ponsetti. She would cut her cast off by hand, so she didn't have that anxiety with the cast saw. And 17 castings on two legs, <laughs> that was pretty amazing. When those casts came off, you know, it was just amazing. Her feet were straight and healthy and beautiful. We got to see our daughter take her first steps with her new feet. And that was an amazing thing that day she did that in the, in the living room. It was only a couple months later, she was skating on the ice here at the rink. For five months, she would watch those little skaters and ask when she could do that. And I said, someday soon, someday soon you'll get to do that, honey. She's got the whole world ahead of her. And I can never, ever thank Dr. Ponsetti and Dr. Marquende and U of I Hospital for the gift they've given to our daughter. And it's the most amazing thing, so thank you. That wraps up this week's episode. Come back and join us again to see what's happening with your university and how it helps students, alumni, and the state. For Inside Iowa, I'm Haley McMiniman. Thanks for watching.